Hello everyone, welcome to this video, an introduction to the Lie derivative. Now this video gives an introduction to the concept of the Lie derivative on a manifold using vector flow field diagrams. It looks at the mapping that generates the flow field and how tensors can be dragged back along it to reveal how they have changed between any two points on the manifold, any two points along the flow of the um, vector field. Um, now, this video will precede one that exists in the playlist. Um, that one that exists in the currently exists in the playlist contains all the calculations and so on. This is the introduction to the Lie derivative and will include a lot of diagrams to motivate the, uh, the formula that results. All right, so let's make a start then. All right, so the Lie derivative captures how a tensor field changes along the flow of a vector field. I'll be using diagrams and the like for that. Um, it generalizes the idea of a directional derivative to more complex objects like vector fields, tensor fields, and differential forms. And the lead derivative of a tensor field along some given vector field measures the rate of change of the tensor field as it is dragged along the flow generated by the vector field. Now, in general relativity, it describes how geometric objects like the metric tensor or curvature tensors change along a vector field which might represent a symmetry or a flow in space time. Okay, such as killing vectors and so on. Uh, now, for two vector fields, X and Y, on a smooth manifold M, the Lie derivative of a Y with respect to X, denoted by L subscript X of Y, captures the infinitesimal change of Y along the direction of X. And I'll use diagrams to tease all that out. All right. So here's our manifold. Uh, let me just, oh, whoops. Here's our manifold. Let me just move that out of the way. So our manifold, I picked a point P on it. So a manifold M, general point P indicator. The, the, the point P is entirely arbitrary. There's nothing special about it. Uh, next one. Oh, sorry, people. Jumping like anything. Now, so let's say there is some vector field X on our manifold in blue there. Now a vector field on a manifold assigns a vector to each point on the manifold. Right. And the vector field X generates the flow lines shown in red. These are the flow lines. These are the integral curves of the vector field. All right. Now the flow of the vector field X is a one parameter family of diffeomorphisms, phi t that maps the manifold to itself, where t is a real number representing time. Now for each point P belongs to the manifold M, there, the flow line or trajectory of P is given by phi t of P. So each one of these flow lines passing through each point P, remember P is arbitrary, Right, is given by phi t of p. And this phi subscript t of p, this um, uh, mapping, um, generates, it generates all the different points along which this flow line moves. So all along here, every single point along here has a particular value, phi t of p. All right, so phi t of p represents points on a manifold. All right, now, the flow map phi t that maps m to m represents how points on the manifold m move under the influence of the vector field x. For each fixed t, phi t of p gives the position of the point p after flowing along x for time t. At t equals zero, the flow map phi zero is the identity map, so phi zero of p is p. So we talk about p, this being the point at t equals zero. Thereafter, it will move along here. Now, this point P could be any point anywhere on the manifold, okay, on any of the flow lines. And phi T will be some time later, T greater than zero. So this second point here will be at some later time. When we nominate a point P, pick a point here, then it's at T equals zero, phi zero of P. Here's our starting point, if you like. Some later time, T greater than zero, we'll have a phi t of p here. Okay, so phi t is a mapping that gives us points along the flow line. Uh, 
Okay, next one. All right, now, while phi t of p itself is a point on the manifold and not a vector, its coordinates in a local coordinate system can be represented as a vector. So you can imagine on the manifold here, if the manifold represents space time, then you could have in a local uh, inertial coordinate system set up at p, okay? So the tangent space here at p, all right? This could be your local co uh, inertial coordinate system here. And you could then regard phi t of p as being some kind of position vector in Rn, all right? But only local to that point for that small enough volume of space time around there for which the laws of special relativity apply. All right. Okay, next one. All right, now let's move that. The derivative ddt phi t of p of this, this mapping phi t of p at t equals zero gives the initial velocity of the point p under the flow. That's at t equals zero, the initial velocity. Uh, and also the direction. The initial velocity should be equal to the vector field x at p. So, the, so one of these blue vectors here at p. Okay, tangent to the flow line at, anchored at p, starting at p, which is the definition of how the vector field x generates the flow. So that's how we found the flow. Now in the previous video in this same playlist, we looked at the flow field and an example there of how to generate the flow lines and derive the equation for them. Now, d dt phi t of p evaluated at t equals zero is a vector in the tangent space t to uh, point p of the manifold m, so the tangent space to the manifold at point p. This vector is exactly the vector field x evaluated at p, x subscript p. All right. So this object, I'll come back to that shortly, but this is the vector x at the point p here. Remember the point P, T equals zero, hence for T equals zero there. All right. So the correct and standard condition for the flow of the vector field X is DDT, phi T of P evaluated T equals zero is X P. So at point P here, you can imagine a blue vector here at T equals zero, it's pointing uh, tangential to the tangent to the flow line, okay, uh, in the direction of the vector field, starting at P there. So that's what this object is. It's that vector there. At a later time, it's going to be different. This condition ensures that the vector field X defines the initial direction and speed of the flow at each point. Okay, let's move here. All right, now, what we're going to do now is look at a concentrate in a particular flow line here. So a manifold still, vector field X all over it. Here's our point P. And what we're going to say is we have another vector, Y, at this point P. Okay, some other quantity that we're interested in, right? So some other vector quantity, y, so on at p, representing something of interest to us, whatever it is. Magnetic field, electric field, whatever it is, okay? Velocity, fall velocity, what have you, all right? Now we want to know how this vector y changes as we drag it along the flow of x. So we take this uh, vector here, and as we move it along the flow here, how does it change? Okay, now this quantity could be some tensor field, not just a vector, but uh, a vector rank one tensor, but you, this could be a tensor in general, okay, including a scalar. But we're going to restrict ourselves to a vector here, and we want to know how, we want to understand how, be able to quantify how it changes as it moves along the flow line here. Okay. All right, so. So we want to know how this vector y changes as we drag it along the flow of x starting at p, t equals zero. All right, so um, at a later time, sometime t greater than zero, right, t greater than zero, it is moved to the point phi t of p over here. Here's our vector quantity, whatever it is, or tensor, which lies in a different tangent space to that in which it started at t equals zero. Uh, I'm showing vectors here, but I mean, we could be talking about a tensor field, you know, like, like a metric or something. Um, but we're just, for the sake of this video, we're going to be working in vectors. They're easier to picture, to draw to. Um, so, uh, so which lies in a different tangent space to that which has started at t equals zero. Notice here, at this point p, you have a unique tangent space to that point. At this point over here, phi t of p, you're going to have a different tangent space. So the vector now lies in a different tangent space. Okay. Now these two vectors lie in different tangent spaces, and so we cannot just subtract the two to find the difference or change in y as it's moved from this point to this point. 
We can't just do that. Um, this is not Euclidean space where you can just add and subtract the vectors because they all share the same basis vectors. You can't do that. Um, okay, so we'll do, we can't just subtract the two to find the difference or change in y after it was dragged along the flow field of x. So we, we need to do something different. All right, this is where the pullback comes in. Okay, we can drag the vector y back along the flow field to a point infinitesimally close to y and then take the limit as t approaches zero. Okay, so this is the pullback now. And what we're going to do is we take our vector which had traveled along the flow line here to this point here, phi t of p at some t greater than zero, and we're going to drag it back along here. And of course we use the mapping to do that because we just do phi minus t, phi star being the pullback of this vector. So we have the vector here y phi t of p, and under the mapping we reverse it, phi minus t asterisk is the pullback, right? And that pulls this vector back to here, where we can then, they are both in the same tangent space at the point P, and then we can compare the difference, the change that has occurred. So in the limit, the two vectors then share the same tangent space, and we can then compare them to determine the change that's taken place. All right, the lead derivative at a point P then can be expressed mathematically as the lead derivative of Y in the direction of X is a limit as T approaches zero of the pullback minus the vector of interest to us. So we're going to pull it back here, okay, divided by t, and in the limit as t approaches zero, with this uh, we then get the lead derivative. Now where phi minus t star, or the pullback, do you know it's the pullback of y by phi minus t? Remember that mapping again? The mapping gives us points at different times t, or give us different points on the manifold along that flow line. Okay, next one. So just coming up here now, moving here. All right. Okay, I'm going to state now here the process for finding the lead derivative for different objects, starting with a scalar, then a vector, and then a one form, and then going on to a tensor. Now, the calculations to verify that these formulas hold and are correct is the subject of the video that follows this one in the playlist. And that video has been there for some time now, and it is just called the Lee derivative or just Lee derivative. And that goes through the calculations to show you how this represents the Lee derivative, and the same with this. So I just I'll state these as facts, um, but that's it. So I've motivated the understanding for Lee derivative, how it is, but how do we go from this pullback and all the rest of it and end up with these objects here? That is the subject of the next video that focuses on calculations. So for a smooth function f. In a vector field x, the lead derivative of f along x is simply the directional derivative. All right. So the lead direction, the lead derivative, sorry, of a scalar function in the direction of x is simply the directional derivative. Okay, the lead derivative of a vector field for two vector fields x and y, the lead derivative of y along x, subject to this video, one of the diagrams in this video, is given by the lead bracket commutator of x and y. Okay, that's this object here in component form or just vector form here, commutator, but writing out the components. Lead derivative of a covector field, the components of the lead derivative of the covector field, uh, I meant to only have one omega there. Of, whoops, I didn't pass the, I uh, uh, should have been checking at the end there. Anyway, with respect to the vector field, there's only one omega there, I don't mean two. Uh, with respect to the vector field X, R, and here are the components. All right, now, uh, in the video that I'm referring to that follows this, I have to hide that. I mean, in the in the video that follows this, um, I uh, I end that video with this formula here, which I've given you some indication in the video of how it's derived. Okay, but this is the lead derivative for a tensor of um, a, a covariant rank, however many indices and uh, um, contravariant rank that many indices and covariant rank that many indices. All right. So if you like, T, R covariant, R contravariant, sorry, S covariant. All right, here you go, that's the form. The next video after this one in the playlist will show you how this comes about. Now the lead derivative captures how Y changes as you drag it along the flow of X. 
If you imagine the manifold as a fluid and X is the velocity field of the fluid, the lead derivative tells you how the vector field Y changes or moves with the fluid. And I've taken that um, example and used it at the beginning of the video that follows this. Now this change is not just the directional derivative of Y along X, but and this is a good thing too, it also includes the contribution from the divergence or convergence of the flow itself. So it gives you that total change along that flow line. Now, now I just should finish with an example, but here's an example. Given this vector field X here, and another vector field Y is this just pointing in the X basis direction, um, then the, the lead derivative for Y along X is the lead derivative of the Y in the direction of X is the commutator here of X and Y. Putting that out, putting in the steps here, Right, you notice expanding that out, you have this, um, this, then here we need to use a product rule, okay, which gives us dx dx, okay, which will give us one, and then um, x times, uh, gives us one times dx, and then um, we have x times dx dx, okay, with a minus here. Over here we have uh, dy dx, zero, remember coordinates are, uh, mutually orthogonal, dy dx zero um, times, uh, okay, so that goes to zero, and then we have y times dx dy, now notice that this first term, third term cancel, second term, last term cancel, and we're just left with minus dx, okay. In summary then, the lead derivative measures the change in a vector field by dragging it back along the flow of another vector field, that's x, so the lead, lead derivative measures the change in the vector field y by dragging it back along the flow of another vector field x and comparing it to its original value, okay? And then looking for the difference between its original value, okay, at p, and, its, uh, and the drag back vector from a later time. This comparison gives insight into how the vector field evolves under the influence of the flow. All right, so that is that. Um, I hope this is useful to people. Um, uh, the calculations which motivate this choice of the commutator and all the rest of it will appear in um, the next video, okay, which is already in the playlist actually prior to this one. All right, thank you very much for watching um, and I'll see you in the next video.